Breast cancer is the most commonly diagnosed cancer in women in Australia. Early diagnosis ensures prompt treatment and the best prognosis possible. Being familiar with your breasts and checking them regularly is recommended for women of all ages and is a crucial part of early diagnosis. This means you know your breasts and how they look and feel. Then early changes such as tenderness or thickening of tissues can prompt you to seek advice from the health professional. Breast cancer is often diagnosed with small changes. Even a tumour the size of a grain of rice can feel tender and cause changes that are visible for diagnosis. Breast cancer is treatable, but the journey is challenging. If you are diagnosed with breast cancer, your support network and communication are important to help you cope. What is breast cancer? Cancer is a disease where normal cells change and grow rapidly. Our immune system normally detects and destroys abnormal cells, but with cancer it fails to recognise the cells and allows them to grow. Because the cells are different, they grow faster than other cells and can spread throughout the body. Breast cancer occurs in breast tissue, in the breast ducts, and then spreads to the lymph system and around the body. If untreated, breast cancer can be fatal. What are the different types of breast cancer? Breast cancers are defined by the type of cells and stage. Your doctor might talk about breast cancer being hormone receptive positive or negative, and this relates to whether the female hormones estrogen and or progesterone are used by the cancer to grow. Or they might say it is Herceptin positive or negative, and this relates to the HER2 Herceptin gene, which helps control how a breast cell grows. Some cancers are hormonal receptive negative and Herceptin receptive negative. These are called triple negative breast cancers. Doctors will also look at how far the cancer has spread and if it is one solid tumour or if there are cancer cells in other areas like the lymph nodes or other organs. This determines what stage from one to four the cancer is. Early cancer diagnosis, either stage one or two, is when it's contained in the breast and may or may not have spread to the lymph nodes. Locally advanced cancer, or stage three, is when the cancer is more than five centimetres and has spread to the tissues around the breast or to a large number of lymph nodes. Metastatic breast cancer, or stage four, is when it has spread to other parts of the body. How is breast cancer diagnosed? Breast cancer is diagnosed in several ways, starting with simple physical examination to complex imaging. This can include a mammogram, which is an X-ray of the breast tissue, flattened to identify any calcifications. Regular mammograms are recommended for women over the age of 40 or 50. So this can be the first stage where any abnormalities are detected. It can also include an ultrasound, which uses sound waves to identify tumor size and provide a picture of the breast tissue or lymph nodes. It can also include a biopsy, which is an actual sample of tumour tissue that is used to identify the type of cancer and the actual cell makeup. A biopsy is performed with the help of X-ray or ultrasound to ensure the correct tissue is collected. A full body scan is also used to detect the presence of abnormal or cancerous cells in the rest of the body to identify the spread of the cancer. The scan may be a CT, MRI or PET scan. With all this information, your doctor can provide you with a full diagnosis, including the type of cancer, whether or not it's using hormones or genes to grow, and the stage, so they can recommend the treatment approach. What are the symptoms of breast cancer? A breast cancer may only be one centimetre or can be up to five centimetres lump. You may think a lump is a common sight, However, you're more likely to feel subtle changes such as thickening or tenderness in your breasts. That's why regular self-examination is so important. The more comfortable you get with the feel of your breasts, the more likely you are to pick up abnormalities. A cancer can be small, like the size of a grain of rice, and have infiltrated into the lymph nodes. Some people also have no symptoms, which is why regular mammograms are recommended for women over the age of 40 or 50. Breast cancer symptoms include a lump or thickening, 
especially if it's only in one breast. Changes in the size or shape of the breast. A change to the nipple, including shape, discharge, or the nipple turning inwards. A change in the breast skin, like dimpling, a rash or redness, or discomfort or swelling in the armpit, soreness or tenderness in the breast that's not related to your menstrual cycle. Your breasts will change throughout your life and over your usual cycle, so knowing what is normal enables you to identify early changes. Even during pregnancy or breastfeeding, it's important to notice unexpected changes and seek medical advice. When should you see a doctor? The best prognosis for breast cancer is early detection, so if you have any symptoms you're concerned about, you should see your doctor or a health professional. This is particularly important if you have a family history of breast cancer or any other risk factors. What are the risk factors for breast cancer? The exact cause of breast cancer isn't known, but we do know there's a number of factors that can increase your risk. Being female is the biggest risk factor. Men can also get breast cancer, but is much less common. Age is also a factor with most breast cancers being diagnosed in women over the age of 50. There is also a genetic factor. If you have a family history of breast cancer on either your mother or your father's side, that can increase your risk, particularly if several members of your family have had breast cancer when they were young. When this has occurred, sometimes doctors will do genetic testing to see if you carry BRCA1 or BRCA2 genes. These genes are associated with an increased risk of breast and ovarian cancer, as well as some other cancers. Hormonal and reproductive factors can also play a role. The longer you are exposed to female hormones, the higher your risk may be. So getting your period before the age of 12, taking the contraceptive pill for a long time, using menopause hormonal therapy for a long time, or starting menopause over the age of 55, can increase your risk. So it can never having given birth, or giving birth after the age of 30, or not having breastfed. Just because these factors increase your risk, that doesn't mean you're definitely going to get breast cancer. There are also general lifestyle factors that can increase your risk of any cancer, like smoking, drinking, alcohol, not getting enough exercise, or being overweight. How is breast cancer treated? Treatment for breast cancer depends on the type and stage of the cancer. The type will dictate the kind of treatment the cancer will respond to and the stage will influence the extent of the treatment needed. It is common to have a combination of treatments and the order for them can vary. The main types of initial treatment are surgery, chemotherapy and radiation therapy. Surgery for breast cancer. Surgery for breast cancer is used to remove the tumour and the tissue around it. This means surgery will include a space around the cancer to ensure all the cancer cells are removed. Surgery is used for different reasons and at different stages of the treatment journey. If you have a single encapsulated tumour that hasn't spread, surgery might be used to remove the lump. If the cancer has spread, surgery might involve the removal of the full breast, which is known as a mastectomy. Sometimes chemotherapy might be used first to reduce the risk of cancer cells in your body and to make the cancer become contained and easier to remove. Surgery can also be used to reduce or debulk the size of the tumour if it is causing discomfort. Recovery time can vary depending on the surgery and you should have regular check-ins with the hospital to make sure everything is going well. Radiation therapy for breast cancer. Radiation therapy uses short bursts of radiation to specific cancer cells. This is very exact, so you'll be measured up using scans and it may have a cast of your breast made so it can be held in the right position to make sure the radiation doesn't go to any other spots. Radiation can be used to kill the cancer cells, to help other treatments or to relieve symptoms. For example, if the cancer is quite advanced and is impinging on nerve cells. There is normally a schedule of weekly or daily treatments for radiation, but the treatment itself only takes about five minutes and each session may take a total of 20 minutes. Afterwards, you need to take special precautions with your bodily fluids as you'll be slightly radioactive for 12 to 24 hours. So you might need to consider changes to your home environment for that period. 
chemotherapy for breast cancer. Chemotherapy or chemo is the delivery of a combination of drugs that work to kill fast acting cells. It may be used to shrink a tumour, kill it completely or control the spread of cancer cells. The duration and type of chemo drugs will relate specifically to the type of cancer you have. These can be taken orally, but most times they'll be delivered by a needle into your vein. Sometimes a device called a portacath might be implanted surgically under your skin to reduce the number of times you need to have a needle injected into your veins. Chemotherapy itself is not painful. Patients say there may be a burn or a feeling of tenderness when it goes in, which you can talk to your nurse about if it is a concern. The side effects are really diverse and in highly individual. People can often have nausea, vomiting, diarrhea or constipation. Because chemo drugs kill fast-growing cells, they often also kill hair and nail cells. That is why people often lose their hair during chemotherapy. They can also get mouth ulcers and have a high risk of bruising and infection as their immune system is also affected. Chemotherapy can put a mental as well as a physical strain on people. They may feel fatigued or foggy with chemo brain, which can change the way of your thinking. They can also feel anxious about the roller coaster of symptoms after treatment, feeling good one day and then nausea and fatigue, then a week of normality before they're back in treatment again. This can help to create a pattern in their life and they can manage but it can still be very challenging. Hormone therapy for breast cancer. Hormone therapy slows or stops the effect of estrogen. This can be used if the cancer is hormone receptor positive, where the cancer cells are using hormones to help them grow. It is often a maintenance treatment to stop the cancer coming back. Because it affects your hormones, it can cause menopause symptoms. Support during breast cancer treatment. Your medical team will talk to you about a personalised treatment approach and explain what they are hoping to achieve. They will discuss the type of treatments, concerns and side effects. Having a support person with you and asking questions to make sure you understand the treatment is helpful as it can be overwhelming. Also taping the health professional meeting and taking notes can be a good idea as there can be a lot of information to absorb. A diagnosis of cancer and the treatment is a journey. Breast cancer treatment can make some women feel like their identity is changing or being lost. They might lose their hair or their breasts and go into early menopause and everything about them can become defined by the cancer diagnosis and treatment. You will be offered access to a range of other health professionals, such as a dietitian, exercise physiologist, physio, counsellor and a social worker. It is important to be open to new ways of coping and understanding your health to ensure the best overall health outcomes. Think about your support network and who can help you through different phases of the treatment and what work or childcare arrangements that you might need help with and how you can take care of your own mental health. Journaling from the beginning of your treatment can help you deal with feelings as they emerge. It can also be helpful to think about what you might want to communicate with your loved ones as you progress along this treatment journey. What ongoing management might be needed for breast cancer patients? After you finish your treatment, there will be ongoing review to ensure there is no further cancer. You may also be on long-term treatment to reduce the risk for hormonally receptive cancers. This can be a time of anxiety, so don't forget to seek help from counselling to improve your coping strategies. Can breast cancer be prevented? Because the exact cause isn't known, breast cancer can't necessarily be prevented. The best thing you can do is to reduce your preventable risks with diet, exercise and not smoking and being breast aware with regular self-examinations and mammograms once you're over the age of 40 or 50.